Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? So today we are going to be doing a South Node of the Moon Ketu in the sign of Sagittarius. And what happens when uh, you have this uh, combination of uh, Ketu and Sagittarius in your horoscope as in your birth chart? Well, what is the sign of Sagittarius? The sign of Sagittarius represents higher knowledge, divine knowledge, rituals, religious learning, religious text like Bible, Quran, Bhagavad Gita. It represents philosophical discussion like who is God and you know what is this universe and who created this. All these philosophical discussions are seen from the ninth house because it requires a higher type of mind to discuss these things and to debate about these things. Okay, And uh, Sagittarius is really a, um, uh, a divine religious type uh, preacher. It's your preacher, it's your professors that are seen from Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the sign that is originally the landlord of the ninth house. So it has all the qualities of the ninth house. You know, like law, writing of the law, your PhDs, your master's degree, just, but, but wherever Sagittarius is placed, that's where your higher philosophical beliefs are. That's where your higher philosophical knowledge is learned. Then you bring in the sign of, uh, I mean, the planet Ketu, the shadow planet Ketu which is about detachment, which is about letting go of material world, which is about embracing meditation, the life of a yogi, which is also about the occult, which is about the dangerous path, because Ketu is not... See, the problem is people think that Ketu is a positive planet because it's promoting meditation, it's promoting the life of a yogi, but no, it does it on a very destructive level. When Ketu comes, when Ketu time period comes, it destroys the material world around you without your permission. That's why Ketu is a very chaotic planet. It'll, like in a blast, it'll take away everything from you. And that's where you'll be forced to embrace spirituality. That's where you'll be able to uh, force to embrace a life uh, full of spiritual bliss than material bliss. So when these two things come together, you know, Ketu says that, look, I've already mastered all this stuff about the rituals and philosophy and following a religion and all this hula-la in the past life. I don't want to deal with this situation now. I'm well beyond this now. So when Ketu is in this uh, sign, he rejects the religious learning. He rejects philosophical learning. He rejects all sort of divine hula-la. He actually, this is a, in a way kind of a you know, half and half situation. Ketu is not really bad, but he's not really good either. The reason why he is not really bad is because he promotes logic think logical thinking. He promotes like, okay, you're discussing about God. You're giving me to read this book called Bhagavad Gita or Quran or the Bible. Yet, who wrote this? Oh, a human wrote this. Why? Oh, he received some divine knowledge from somebody. Oh, and I'm supposed to believe that? So they become very logical. And in a way, it's good because it promotes scientific thinking. See, Ketu in the sign of Sagittarius becomes a researcher. These guys want to research about if they want to, if, if they even believe for a second that, okay, there's this imaginary God who's looking down on us and we, we do bad. He strikes this lightning. They will do research on that. They will actually go and find things to prove, disprove it or prove it. So in a way, Ketu does take on this philosophical and higher uh, learning scenario, but yet... It's towards logical thinking, not this divine, you know, these bunch of old bearded men sitting around and discussing about uh, philosophy and all the religious texts. No, this guy, this person is more like, let's say, an astronomer. He looks at the stars. He's like, what are these stars? Oh, some philosopher will say, oh, these are the old gods who have died and they have become stars. They're like, okay, let me look at it through a telescope. The Ketu Sagittarius looks at through his telescopes like, no, these are not God. These are these big, gigantic ball of fire and they're made of these uh, carbon compounds and all these different gases of helium and hydrogen. And so that's what right Ketu becomes. So in a way, they will criticize religion. They will criticize your belief. This is why the, this is where the negative side of Ketu comes into play. Like these people will criticize your belief system. They say, no, disprove it. These guys will be like, screw astrology. Prove it to me. Prove me astrology is right. You know, and yet they will not even have an open mind about it. But in a way, it's good. These people will then challenge me that, hey, listen, okay, you see this alignment? This can uh, make you have a really bad or physical abuse through your father. 
bad relationship through your father. They will challenge you. So in a way, I think it's a good uh, placement because it challenges the establishment. It challenges what, what is set as a standard. Why should you believe in astrology? Really, to be honest, have somebody disprove you that no, this astrology stuff is not fake. This astrology stuff works. Th let them prove you that psychics are not fake. They're real. So in a way, it's a good position. It's a very challenging position. And these can become these natural researcher of scientific thinking, logical thinking than this philosophical thinking. So I would say all in all, this is a very good position N nowadays. But if somebody had this 5,000 years ago, they'll be cursed. You challenged your guru. You challenged who Ram was and Krishna was and Allah was. They would crucify you for this, for these kind of belief system. But now that we're in this new age, hey, this is more welcome now. This is more of a challenging thinking. This is more of this, hey, I have mastered what philosophy is and what religion is. It's your job to now prove it to me. And I'm not going to believe it just from these books. So these guys can actually attain their PhDs and their master's degree and their doctorate degree in, in higher type of learning, whether it's scientific, whether it's even psychology or psychiatry or any kind of engineering type of learning. But you will rarely see these guys as practicing preachers unless there's a Jupiter aspect on Ketu or unless Jupiter is sitting with Ketu or unless uh, Ketu is in the nakshatra of Jupiter. All right. So guys, this is my analysis of Ketu and the sign of Sagittarius. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you want to know where your south node of the moon Ketu is placed and along with other planets and what conjunctions it's having, check out the links below. Check out my book there, Astrology at the Speed of Light and Conjunctions at the Speed of Light. And when you get these two books, I will send you the link to look at your own chart. Just make sure to follow the directions below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time with Ketu in the sign of Capricorn. Bye-bye.